friends, students, it's been a long time. It's Erev Pesach coming around. And I guess I'd like to share some ideas with you. Primarily, we, uh, we, um, this is a thought which I teach a lot, but the more I teach, the more I realize how it's necessary to repeat this and to make sure this happens. We spend the night of Pesach doing so many things, tell me nice stories, all the gory details of Mitzrayim, etc. And sometimes I wonder if we're not missing the mark. We're really not doing what's supposed to be done. And here, let me explain what this is all about. You see, um, the Pasuk says in the um, beginning of Parshish Sabah, V'yem HaShem HaMoshe Bo'el Parog, Kodesh Baruch says to Moshe, come with me to Pharaoh. Ken yich batke et libo v'et leva v'adav, I've made his feelings and the feelings of his servants callous. Leman shiti ototai, in order I can place indicators or simanim, signs of my existence, bikirbo. One has to remember, in Hebrew there's a concept of ot and a concept of mofet. Somehow people think mofet means miracles. I really don't know why. Because mofet does not mean a miracle. Mofet means a proof. There are things which indicate the existence of God and the things which actually prove a point about God. One is called an oat. The other is called a mofet. So one understands that God says, listen, I did these makot because I wanted to bring otot. Signs of my existence, indicators of me being Bikirbo within the midst of the Egyptians. That's number one. And then also in order you should tell your children and your grandchildren, that's which I basically played with the Egyptians and made it happen to them. You tell the story, and then what? Vet ototai asher samti bam. You must translate those stories into how do they indicate my existence. V'yidatem ki ani Hashem. We all know the v'yidatem, as opposed to chachma, which means knowledge, bina, understanding, which are both expressions of the cerebral self. Dat means transforming and moving cerebral intelligence into emotional intelligence something that becomes vivid and real and creates emotional reactions. It means to internalize this as a truth and to feel it. The Ani Hashem, I am Yudke Vavke, as the Ramban says in Pashas Yisro, Hovek Kadmon, I'm the primary existent, Hashem Imenu HaKod, it all comes from Him, out of His will and His capabilities, His omnipotence. Ani Yudke Vavke Eli, I am God. Seems to be telling us that the purpose of the night of Egypt is not to tell gory details, but to tell how these things indicate that there's only one God that rules it all. Now, this is a Ramban at length. At the end of Parsha's Bite, where the Ramban actually writes this, and the Ramban says, you know, in those days, the Jews, as the Egyptians, were, were pagans. Maimonides quotes this in the first laws of Hilchus Avedezora, that all the Jews were pagans except for Shevet Levi, very, very proud, whoever is a Levi or a Ben Levi. Me'olam lo avad Levi, the tribe of Levi, was never Oved Avedezora. But except for that, all the Jews were Oved Avedezora, totally assimilated. Only 20% of them were redeemed. 80% were not redeemable. They were died in Makas Choshech. And what did the 20% have? The 20% only had that they preserved an ethnic identity. They kept their Jewish names. Goldberg, I don't know what. They kept their, uh, their, their language, which happens to have been a, uh, a Canaanite dialect as brought down in Ramban, in Parshat Vayigash. It was a language that not only Jews used, it was their homeland. It's like the Jews talking Yiddish. 
in the, uh, on Hester Street in the old Lower East Side in the 1920s. And they kept their Canaanite garb. It basically means they kept their ethnic identities. So to some Midrashim, they didn't intermarry. According to others, we have no indication that they didn't. They were totally assimilated and pagan. That's what they were. The Navi writes in Yechezkel chapter 20 that God sent Aaron HaKohen, who prophesied in Egypt from the age of three till the age of 80, three, for 80 years, prophesied and says, Jews, come back to monotheism and I will take you to the land of Israel. And I will free you from your bondage. And the Jews refused. The Pesach said that God was so angry he wanted to destroy the Jews in Egypt after that. But then he decided, no, I won't do it for the hallowness of my name because I need my name to be known to humanity. And thus I need a nation to live, breathe, and talk my creed. I have to take them out and give them the Torah. And that's what he finally did through Moshe. But the Jews on their own did not want to leave. It's as simple as that. And the Pasuk says because they want to keep their Avodah Zorah. And they don't want to keep Shabbat because Shabbat is an indication of, of monotheistic creator of a world. No, they're not interested. So the Rabban says that basically the three dominant beliefs found in Egypt at the time were first of all, there is no creator. The world always was. Second of all, those who thought there may be a creator, but he created the world and left it, and everything is haphazard. No hashgacha pratit. And then, obviously, uh, there's another idea. Another, another thing was to say, he doesn't even know or care about it. He's not involved. And because of that, the Makos came to reintroduce him to humanity and for, uh, to the Jews. Ramban says that's the pshat and the psukim. Bezot teida ki ani Hashem, reintroducing that I am the Creator. I am Hove Kadmon Shemimenu Hakol Bechefetz Viacholet. Laman teida ki ani Hashem bekerev haaretz. I'm involved. I discern, look at people's actions, and decide what happens to who. Hashgacha pratit. And en kamoni b'chala aretz is another uh, pasik. The mante daki en kamoni b'chala aretz. Say, I have no partners. There's no Neptune in the oceans. Ain't no god of sun and god of moon. No, it's all me. Chefso v'yecholto hashgacha. God reintroduces himself to humanity and specifically to the Israelites through the ten makos. The pasik seems to be saying that we are not just to tell the stories, we were to tell the stories and thus understand Ani Hashem, that Yudke Vavke is our God, and we have to explain that to our children. And here you have um, how the Rambam puts it down, I'll just read this to you. Rambam writes that um, we start on the downside of things and then we end with the upside. We contrast the bad to the good. You start your story by saying, Originally, in history, from the days of Terach, the father of Ram, to those preceding him, which leads until the third generation of creation, Enosh, the grandson of Adam were all pagan. From three, third generation, three of creation, all the way through Terach. They were all pagan except for Avraham. Unbelievable what we're talking about here. Asara Dairais me Adam Vad Noyach. Take away two that we're still and then from Enosh is number three. You're talking about eight generations with Noyach already who are pagan except for Noyach. And then from Noyach to Avram is another nine, gen ten generations. Take away the one which is called Noyach. You have all together, what are we talking about? We're talking about 16 generations, 17 generations of paganism. Only three, Abraham was one, Adam and Shesh, that's it. Everything else was paganism. Really a lonely man, Abraham. 
And God says, I take this man, Abraham, I'm going to create a nation out of him. He's going to bring the world back to monotheism. So when you look at Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, look at the idea that this is the day that we were introduced to that. You must tell your children the story of history. The first Perik in Hilchas Avodah Zorah. How did Avodah Zorah develop? That all the way until Avraham, no one believed in a God. What happened? And then he continues, after we say that, Then he says, Then we conclude this theme with the real religion. That God brought us close to him. And he separated us from those who are misled. The Kirvanu Lichudon brought us in proximity to his monotheistic oneness. That is number one. A theme that we don't usually talk about at the Seder. And I must say, um, it's not, I still remember in COVID, where you couldn't be with your family. I remember during the, I had a Seder just with my wife. I found that to be the best Seder I ever had in my life. We had tremendous theological and philosophical discussions of Mora Nebuchim. And I felt, wow, I'm finally doing what the Ram tells me to do. I am discussing monotheism and the development of paganism, how man moved away from it. What do we believe in? How do I see that in the Makos? And then the Ram says there's a second thing. Then you start a new theme. After you finish the story of Mitchila, which is the first one line of the Agada, but it's a lot of talking. And then there's the second thing. Avadim Hayinu Pharaoh. we were servants, slaves actually, to Pharaoh in Egypt. Not only were we slaves, but we were tormented. So there's two issues. A, slaves, not free men. B, tormented and afflicted. And you end talking about the wondrous things that happened and the supernatural things called the miracles. And then you also end in our freedom. Another theme which I shudder to think that people don't focus on on the night of Pesach. We focus a lot about the gory stories of the terrible affliction. We focus a lot about the miracles of salvation. Do we focus about the contrast between slavery and freedom? Do you sit with your child and explain to them the meaning of freedom and how freedom is needed to make free choice? and decide to give away your freedom to Machut Shemayim. Is that the conversation? According to Rambam, the minimum needed on the night of Pesach when you talk to your children is not the stories of the Midrash, is not all these gory details of kids being stuck into walls or whatever it be, but rather as Rambam writes in Allah Chabez, you tell him, Kulanu hayinu avadim, we were slaves, not even mention that was bad. You must tell the child what a slave is. How would he know? He grew up in a democracy. So you have to show him something vivid to understand what slavery is. Now he's your slave. He's living well. He's fine. You're taking care of him. You're a nice observant Jew. You don't afflict your slave. You know, but even that slave, we don't want to be. We don't want to be owned by anybody. God wants us to be his. He doesn't want us to be someone else's. A slave has no personality of his own. He's an extension of his master's alter ego. He lives his master's agenda. He can't even acquire things. His capabilities of acquisition are his master's. God says, You want to be by service slaves. You have to walk away from other slaveries. So freedom is the prerequisite, it's the platform on which we can be mekabel ol machut shemayim. I wish and I pray that we should use this Pesach night first to discuss freedom, discuss the capability that we make our own decisions. Think of history, think of the fact that we have our own country today and we make our decisions.
for good or for worse. But we make our decisions. Freedom. You know, as Pesach starts, I always think what next is Yom Atzmaut. Yes, I think of freedom. And Pesach is a celebration that man finally is free and can live by his own agenda and make his own decisions. And then second of all, remember, there's one Melech Malchi Amlochim. Use your freedom and choose to subjugate yourself to the source of all. That's what we learn, and that's the night of Pesach. Cherus and the Adatem Kiani Hashem. Chag Kosher V'Samech.